Hey guys, welcome back to Electrified Reviews. My name is Mitch. This is the Ranger from Cy Rusher. We're about to put it through its paces, take it off road. As you can see there's a little bit of mud on there, so we've already done a little bit of that, but there is more to come. Howdy folks. Saddle up because today we're gonna take a good long look at the Ranger a wild stallion of an e-bike hailing from the stables of Cy Rusher. This beast is packing some serious tech under the hood with a price tag of $2,800 that's sure to make any bandit think twice. It's geared towards urban cowboys, cruisers, and those who would like to stray off the beaten trail. Now, if you're interested for more electrifying reviews like this, be sure to mosey on over to electrifiedreviews.com. Like the Lone Ranger's trusty steed silver, this Ranger is powered by a Buffon motor. Oh. You didn't know that? It's it's definitely true. No need to fact check us there. This rear hub motor is one powerful varmint, boasting a nominal output of 750 watts and a torque of 80 newton meters. It ain't no old-fashioned cadence sensor, neither. This bad boy is equipped with a torque sensor, and believe me, it's pretty darn fun to ride. It's like the Chuck Norris of e-bikes, roundhouse kicking you up those steep hills with ease. When it comes to juice, this Ranger's got a 52 volt, 20 amp hour lithium ion battery that's got more capacity than a cowboy's 10 gallon hat. With 1,040 watt hours of power, you are looking at an estimated range of between 35 to 60 miles, enough to chase down any outlaw. Charging this bad boy takes about six hours, so you'll have ample time to enjoy a sarsaparilla at the saloon before heading back out to kick up some more dust. This steed's got a frame made of 6061 aluminum alloy, tougher than a two dollar steak. It stands a bit on the taller side, just four hands shorter than your average Shetland pony, or 7.5 hands. And for those not accustomed to equestrian equations, that's about 30 inches. It's got attachment points for your water bottles, fenders, and even some saddlebags. This Ranger's double crown front fork with air suspension, and the air suspension in the rear here makes this ride smoother than a gambler's bluff. Now, I don't go crazy with exclamatory remarks when reviewing e-bikes, because, well, this isn't an infomercial. With that being said, the Ranger and Trax from Cyrusher are the most comfortable e-bikes I have personally ridden. Now, if you're a company rep and you're thinking your bike is more comfortable, well, then let me review it, gosh darn it. Shoot us over an email at mitch at electrifiedreviews.com. The Ranger comes with Logan hydraulic brakes, boasting 180 millimeter rotors, providing stopping power stronger than a Ranger's sense of justice. Whether you're riding faster than a speeding bullet or cruising along, these brakes ensure your safety isn't just a roll of the dice. And although we don't condone gambling on this channel, the analogy works, so our legal team has cleared me to leave it in. Next, we'll be teaming up with Steve, we'll do it. I didn't think you had it in you. I'm your huckleberry. Oh, oh, okay, no, they said we need to take that last part out. Sorry, Brian. Shifting gears on this e-bike is as smooth as butter on a hot biscuit, thanks to its nine-speed Shimano Altis system. With a Shimano trigger shifter, you'll be shifting faster than a Power Ranger morphing into action or me switching up pop culture references on my editors. The gearing here is set up really well. We have enough range to take off from a dead stop really easily, but also we don't get any ghost pedaling on the higher ends, even at the top speed of 20 miles per hour. So from a gearing perspective, this thing works out pretty good. The C-Bike comes with an integrated headlight and horn, making sure you're seen and heard even when riding through the darkest of nights. It even has the option to add fenders, keeping you dry and clean, no matter the weather, because even rangers need to look their best while keeping their butts dry and mud-free. The cockpit here features non-locking rubber grips, and normally this is a con, but these grips didn't move at all, so while I would still prefer double locking grips, I can't really fault the ones that come stock here. The 3.7 inch color full LCD display comes with readouts for everything from trip distance to average speed, and is currently my second favorite display that I've ever reviewed. If you're curious about what my favorite display is, ask me here in the comments. With the top speed of 28 miles per hour and an upright forward body position, the Ranger is perfect for cruising and moderate trail riding. You could also also morph this into a commuter, but you'd want to add a rack and fenders for most commuting use cases. So whether you're heading to work or chasing down outlaws, the Ranger has got you covered. And you know what we should cover? The ride field. And we'll do that today on The Ride Test. Hey guys, just want to take a second to let you know that we have a lot more than just reviews here. If you head over to electrifiedreviews.com, you can use our advanced compare tool to put the Ranger up against any of the other fat tire full suspension e-bikes on the market. All right, guys, welcome outside to the ride test on the Ranger from Cy Rusher. I'm gonna go ahead and get my, oh, I moved that at a mile an hour. How dope is that? Moving faster on here, guys. Moving faster around here. Get that clicked in over there. And let's go ahead, I got an in pedal level five. We've got our twist rail over here. Let's go ahead and give it a pull. And there you go. We're off to the races. Now, one of the cool things that I like about this one 
is you do have access to the full power of the throttle at all times. So even if we're stopped, you know, that's great. Now, one thing to always double check is, go ahead and stop again. I love those brakes. Let's go ahead and put it in pedal assist level zero. Not gonna work. Pedal assist level one, it's gonna work. But it's only taking us up to that eight, nine miles per hour. So even though we do have access to the power, I guess not the, you know, to say that it's the full power, that's not actually accurate because the pedal assist is going to dictate how fast the throttle is gonna go for us. But if we put it in five, it's gonna go to 20 miles per hour. And if we want to do the extra speed work here, we're going to put in a little bit of work, utilize those torque sensors, but we'll do that in just a second. Just a minute here. Well, then we can shift up a little bit. Shift on the gears is easy. We've got nine speeds here. And a torque sensor, as you guys know, putting some extra pressure in there, and it's going to take us up to at 28 miles per hour and use those brakes again. Nice, easy control stop. Got a party or something over there. What's happened? I wasn't invited to that party. Yeah, I feel like you drive by with your friends are having a party and uh, check your phone, you didn't get the invite to it. That is okay, it happens. More cruise. So again, you know, it's a torque sensor, which is nice. So as I'm putting in pressure, this is a really nice Cadence for me to go this fast. And I'm going uh, 31. I'm still getting some power here, baby. 31. Can we make it 32? Oh, we can make 32. Nice, nice, nice. Slow down a little bit for the traffic here. Addy. We're gonna speed it back up, guys. This is a bike review. Now, as you guys know, if you've been following me, this is my second Ranger that I've had. We reviewed a, uh, a green one a while back. And it's one of the most comfortable rides. Like, there's no difference between me going here and me going over on the side here. It is uh, super smooth. Full suspension. It is adjustable. So, you can dial it in up front, you can dial it in the back. And that is pretty sweet. We need to tighten down this uh, strap a smidge. Here we go. Gonna hit a brake over here. And this is a bike you definitely would want to take off road because that is where it is right at home. But as you can tell by some of the puddles and stuff, it has been raining here, not having great weather over in Houston, Texas. So the trails are closed and uh, we're not those kind of guys, you know what I mean? We're not those kind of guys that see the uh, the posts and the group, and like the trail's closed, we got there anyway. That's not us, guys. And we're just cruising. Go ahead and break a little bit, go around this corner here. Now again, having the torque sensor is just such a such a good experience because it's more of a natural bike riding sensation than regular cadence. Because with regular cadence, I could not actually be putting any force in there and just kind of you know rotating it, and the bike will still go the same speed. Which for some people, and honestly, you know, just for some situations, that is not a horrible not a horrible thing to have if you're just looking to, you know, cruise around. But if you want more of that, that bike feel and that's sort of what you're after, then torque sensors are definitely the way to go as far as ride feels goes. Braking super easy. Oh yeah, I like that. All right, so we've shifted down all the way. Let's go ahead and do a, a turn here. A turning radius. Now with these bikes in particular, some of these ones that have sort of like the thicker um, tube here, and then also kind of this double crown setup that comes up above the tube, you do miss out on a little bit of the turning. Now if you're going any sort of speed, this doesn't matter. I mean, you never would be going that fast in the turn. I mean, that's, I'm already kind of turning it way too far at that point. I haven't even hit it yet. So really it's kind of for those like slow, you know, turning around tight spots. That's just something to consider. 
Oh yeah, that's that, too easy. That was too easy. I almost feel like we need to uh, lower the level of pedal assist. See if that doesn't, uh, let's put it on one. Let's see if that makes it pretty easy. And go ahead and hit the, hit the hill again. You know, I had to put in a little bit more effort, lowering the level of pedal assist. Let's put it on five. If you really got one of those hills where you're like, man, I gotta get up that hill, probably would have it on pedal assist level five anyway. Let's go ahead and hit a Yui here in our designated incline testing area. Let's see, kind of come to a stop here and let's go. Whew. That's accelerating up the hill, okay. I see you, Ranger. I see ya. Again, break in here. Easy. Easy as pie. Now, one of the only disadvantages, I think, to having all these trails around here is there's not a lot of good spots that are just, you know, woods to go ride a bike around like this in. So like if I can do a up there, there's some trails. I guess there's not really anything over there, but there's nowhere to really ride over there either. Let's see if we can find something that's, uh, you know, off the beaten path. Actually, I got a spot. Let's go over here. Let's do a top speed run here, see if we can get past that 32. Oh, we are cruising. Again, super comfortable ride, full suspensions. Really is like riding on a, on a big juicy e-bike cloud. And we're cruising. Oh yeah, so 31 is kind of where it can go if you're kind of pedaling. A little bit of force here, go ahead and hit the brakes. Try not to skid the tires here, but we're going 30 miles an hour, folks. Man, yeah, the torque on this motor is just super fun to ride. If you're not looking for a super torquey motor, oh folks, you need to look elsewhere. You might stay kind of out of the mud, but we're still, you know, off-road here. Definitely where this bike wants to be. Looking out for stumps, because I don't know if you guys remember the tracks video, but those stumps can be dangerous. Now, one of the one of the things here that could be something, or would be something, that I would do is uh, add some fenders, because uh, your boy's wet. Your boy's wet back here. But I mean, it's handling this terrain like, literally, like, I, you know, I can tell there's bumps, but nothing too crazy. What about this? Can we, can we go over this log? Can it handle the log? The log of doom? The log test. Actually, I don't think so. Just based on the bottom bracket, I'm not gonna risk it, but tires could definitely handle that. Well, let's uh, skedaddle out of here. Maybe a little bit slower this time because, uh, yeah, I'm still wet. Guess I need to take a shower anyway, you know? It's one of those days. You know those days when you're out reviewing e-bikes all day and looking at bikes and filming with drones and getting that B-roll, doing the ride test. You know those days, guys, come on. All right. And then boom, we're off the races. Woo! Button break over here, kind of in the mud. Too easy. Too easy. Yeah, we're gonna have to be wiping this bike down a little bit lighter. But this is the sort of environment, you know, kind of hitting these trails and stuff. You know, throw a couple fenders on there. Why the heck not? You know, I don't know why you would unless you're just into getting dirty. Now, we have attachment points up front, so if you did want to attach some finisher, you definitely could do that. No extra modifications, you know, you don't have to re rely on some, you know, wild third-party, you know, fender applications or, you know, wrapping around something. There are, you know, mounting points for it. So definitely would be an option if you guys wanted to add some fenders and 
As I said, that'd be my recommendation. Oh yeah, boy. And we are cruising. And then you, know, you put a little bit of force on it and boom, this takes off. So if we put less force, then we're gonna get less from the motor starting to slow down a little bit. Cause I'm still, I'm still pedaling at about the same cadence, but I'm just uh, letting off a little bit. And then if you just hammer it, okay, there you go. There you go. Woohoo! Guys, this is fun. Slow down here on the, around this corner. Just I like going fast, doesn't mean I like being reckless, okay? How you little people down in the comments like, you gotta kill somebody. I'm not here to kill anybody. I'm just out here to ride these bikes. You know what I mean? All right, all right. That's a good path. It's a good path there. Forego the mud, I'll go through the mud. I'll forego the mud again. Oh, yeah. Things like hills? No. I don't know what you're talking about. Now, as far as the grips go, we don't have any locking mechanisms here or anything like that, but they are super sturdy on here. I mean, that's not twisting at all. And they are, you know, a little bit thicker, so it kind of gets a little bit of an oversized feel to it. Now, this is a bike we're gonna be taking off-road, so if I was gonna keep this one long-term, that's something I would look at. Upgrading is getting some, you know, some locking, some locking grips. I also, you know, I might uh, throw a thumb throw on there. I'm gonna get two full-size grips on here. A little thumb throttle action somewhere, maybe right over here. That would be golden. One of the other things I'm always looking for too is like the difference or the time in between switching from throttle. Then I'm just doing throttle, right? We're hitting 20 miles per hour. That's what we want to see. But then if I want to pick up pedaling, how fast does that take over? So if I start pedaling, let go of the throttle, it's instantaneous. There's no gaps whatsoever between you know me getting some some applied power here, which is awesome. Um, not a huge deal if, if that is the case. You just got to get used to that, that cadence and sort of how your bike's responding to those, those changes. But I like that. If I'm pedaling, I go to throttle. I mean, no, no gap in between that whatsoever. It's instantaneous going from throttle to pedal assist, which is awesome. Now, as far as the balance of the bike, let's test it on the balance test. Oh, too easy. This feels great. Nice big wide tires, we've got a nice platform down there, and we can just cruise and cruise, baby. Oh yeah, just cruising and cruising. Come on now, come on now, let's go. Okay, the... Yep. I like it, guys. Now something you probably already mentioned in the review is the fact that we don't have an adjustable stem. So if you're someone who's a little bit taller, this might be something you want to look at doing is upgrading to an adjustable stem. Because for me, this is a pretty good, you know, my arms are, I don't know, I'm not good with geometry. A couple degrees underneath being flat here. And so that is kind of a very comfortable riding position for me. But if you're taller, you know, you'd have to raise the seat up more so that, uh, the degrees would increase, decrease again. Not super good with geometry, but that is something I would look at replacing as well or upgrading. But if you're in that 510, 511 mark, it's a very comfortable ride feel here and some good pedal geometry at the same time. And throttle, throttle, that's not a word. Throttle super responsive. And yeah, really, it's, it's one of the more pleasant e-bikes to ride around because of the fact that you've got you know, the fat tires and you've got the full suspension. So this rides more like, you know, a dirt bike or some sort of like small light electric motorcycle. That's just more of the, more of the vibe that you get here. You know, you still, you still can cut, but it's, it's a cut and a lean. You know, if you get somebody who's riding around the 26 by fours, you know what I'm talking about, right? So you kind of give up a little bit of that bike feel for the added suspension of you know all of the the area all of the the volume of air that's in those tires kind of cushioning a lot of this ride as well and the fact that it's just super balanced look at this 
you probably can't see it in the camera, but I'm doing sort of the, the Rose from Titanic thing. I would sing a song from Titanic, but it's been a long time since I've seen it. I don't know what those songs are. Go ahead and do another break test here. Too easy. Too easy, guys. Well, look, I think that's gonna do it for our review of the Ranger from Cy Rusher. If you guys wanna know more about it, you can check it out in the description. Head over to our website, electrifiedreviews.com. You can check out all the specs, compare it to other e-bikes that are you know, full suspension, fat tire, whatever you're feeling. You do whatever you want to over there. It's a, uh, yeah, it's the wild, wild west over there, baby. Do whatever you want. But guys, thank you so much for riding with us, and we'll catch you on the next one. With its robust frame, powerful motor, and impressive range, the Cy Rusher Ranger is a force to be reckoned with. At 2800 bucks, it's a bit of an investment, but with a two-year warranty and considering the wealth of features you're getting, it is as sound as a dollar. Not the US dollar, but we'll leave the you know economics there up to the professionals. Whether you're an urban cowboy, a trailblazing adventurer, or just looking for a comfortable cruise, this bike has something to offer. It's got a few minor drawbacks, such as the weight. At 74 pounds, it's not the lightest e-bike on the market, but with its power and range, it more than makes up for a few extra pounds. Now this e-bike is here to make a statement, and that statement is, I'm the law around these parts. So there you have it, folks, the Cy Rusher Ranger. It's not just an e-bike, it's a badge of honor. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a date with Destiny. And by Destiny, I mean another e-bike review. So remember to check out electrifiedreviews.com for more electrifying reviews, and we'll catch you on the next one.